Hello, and welcome to The Town of Light. This is a game that came out in 2017, and it's a first-person psychological horror game, as far as I'm aware of, which is why I'm doing it. It is an indie horror game. <clears throat> Real short. I think it's about four hours. Um, and I hope that it doesn't give me technical problems like the last game I, I played did. The last game I did was Don't Knock Twice, but this isn't about that. This game is about a 16-year-old girl named Renee, and you're helping her figure shit out, basically. And, um, so I know a thing or two. Uh, and by the way, the reason I mention it is because Renee has some kind of mental illness. I don't know anything about it, but she has some kind of mental illness. Um, and her mental illness plays a part in this. In fact, as far as I know, this game was like Outlast, where it takes place in an insane asylum. In the 1940s, mind you, as far as I know. So this game apparently touches upon a lot of um, issues surrounding psychiatric care and whatnot in the 1940s. And if you know anything about that, then you know that let that some, um, dare I say, fucked up shit happened there. Um, so it, and uh, apparent so there is a lot of emotionality to it. In fact, you know there. Even, you know, one of the, the, there, even when I purchased this game, there was a warning um, saying, you know, that this contains emotional and disturbing stuff from, that's, that's apparently based on real life events, so only adults should play it, you know, that type of shit. Um, so, uh, I don't know how true that is. Uh, so, apparently, like, I don't think that this game is based on an actual event, but, like, Apparently, the the devs actually did some research into real life um, trauma shit from psychiatric care back in the day, and they based this game story around that real life research. So, like, the exact story probably is fictional, but many elements thereof are not, or at least they're they're inspired by other things. So that being said, let's go ahead and go. Adjust brightness so the doll is... But I don't care about this. Truly, I never care about this brightness shit. And the reason why is because... If I were to do it so the doll is barely visible, when I actually get into the game, I can't see shit. Ah. Chapters. I thought this was supposed to be, like, real short. <clears throat> Renee's diary. I assume nothing's loaded there, though. <laughs> Nothing. Right off the bat, loading screens leave something to be desired, but then again, I suppose it's alright. Options, I already know all the options. Unless there's some kind of controller mapping, I don't care about it. No? Okay, I don't care about then. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. There's no point in me- <sighs> There's no point in me doing chapters, since I'm just doing new game, so. New game! Here we go. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this is the same thing I saw when I first bought it, but I'll go and do it again. The Town of Light is based on real events, places, and research concerning mental illness and the life of patients in lunatic as I don't know. I'm gonna I'm not gonna be pee I don't in insane asylums from the beginning of the twentieth century until their closure. It contains stories uh, stories which may be disturbing. The characters and names are fictitious, and any reference to people living or dead is purely coincidental. This game uses an artistic interpretation of a former oh yep, uh, inter of a former Italian psychiatric institution for dramatic purposes. See, so the area yep, so the place and the events surrounding this. Are based on, or directly based on real shit, but the story itself is false. Gotcha. It's a fictional story taking place in real shit. Please note that mental health services have radically improved around the world. If you think you may have psychological problems, please speak to a local doctor or specialist. Here's the thing, okay? Now there, are, there are a lot of games that you know give that stupid you know uh this th it was made by a team of you know multiple races and genders and identities and sexual orientations and you know one of us is a fucking alien from mars so you know no matter what's in this game you know you're good to go like you know they're, they're like 
So like, I, that was one thing. Like the the first the first Assassin's Creed game warranted that. None of the other ones have. They just keep it there, I guess, because it's a staple at this point. But like, if you're gonna give me a message like this at the beginning of the game, honestly, I want to see fucked up shit because I want this ominous message to mean something. If there's not a lot of fucked up shit in this shit, then that tells me that this was unwarranted. I, I hope that this message is warranted. I hope there's some fucked up shit. I know there's emotional shit in this. Volterra, 1942. What's happened? What is this place? Maybe, maybe I'm dead. I can't see any light. Maybe I am dead. I can't get up. What's going on? What's happening to me? There's no one here, but these noises. God, my head is killing me. I can't keep my eyes open. Reality fades away and my skin is gone. Every breath of wind is excruciatingly painful. Inspired by real events. Volcaterra, Tuscany, 2016. Ah, so this is going to be like True Detective Season 1 where there's a uh, different storyline, different points in time. First off, these graphics need, <laughs> lead a lot to be desired for. But then again, it is an indie game, so I'm not going to give too much shit. I mean, um, what's-his-face, Song of Horror was the same way. So three things I didn't mention before that I should have in the introduction. This is going to be kind of like a continued introduction right here. So, um... First off, the reason I, I I found out about this game, because there's a game coming out called Tormented Souls that I want to do a playthrough on. But that game hasn't actually come out yet, but this is the previous game that the devs have done. So I was like, you know what, I'll do this one while I'm waiting for Tormented Souls. Mm. But also, so two things. One, like I said, I know a thing or two about the 19, about insane asylums like this. So what I'm going to do is I'll give any take I have on the conditions, right? Like, I'll, I'll give some commentary on that here and there, some critiques, um, which I'm, I'm sure they've done the research, so I'm, I'm sure, but it, maybe I'll have something to add. I don't know. Um, and lastly, it should be noted in case you haven't figured this out yet, that because Renee happens to be, happens to, to be mentally ill, it should be stated that, you know, not everything that you see in the game is even going to be real in the game. Just three things I wanted to kind of point out. So, X is the interaction button, gotcha. I kind of... kind of thought I could do something with that. That lag is the game, by the way. Oh god, this this game is about to have a lot of technical issues, isn't it? Well, not necessarily technical issues, but like, because this is lagging pretty hardcore style. That is one thing I saw. One thing I did see when I was looking in this game is that it has some technical problems, but that they're not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. Whatever K, distressed, but he held up by their faith. Her mother, Irene E., Father Eric, and Sister Martha deliver the grievous news. The funeral will take place in La, Rom La Romola on Sunday, April 16, at 1530, starting from the house of the deceased. <clears throat> Ooh, so, so these are all readable. First food rationing and improvements. On April 20th, bread rations increased by 50 grams per day, an extra kilogram per month of soup products. Agricultural laborer treatment reform an extraordinary marmalade distribution. So this is, this is by Brits. Incredible anti-aircraft victory. 159 aircraft shot down in 24 hours by the German Continental Air Defense. World War II. 
major Russian operation northwest of Jesse. Enemy convoys scattered in the Mediterranean. Two destroyers and 16 merchant vessels sunk. What's this last one? Nothing, apparently. Unless I just didn't read it. Fierce murder in San Casciano, April 14th, 1944, Giulia K. A young woman from a respectable family was brutally murdered near her home. Police are investigating. Possible political motive emerges. And there's nothing in here but shit. Cool. So some shit from World War II, gotcha. Which makes sense. And that's it. Oh, shit. Experience. Volterra, 1942. What's happened? What is this place? Oh, that's the same. That's what she was saying before. Wait, what is all this shit about? Huh? Okay. So uh, what the hell am I to do here? Ah, goddamn flight path. If a plane can be heard, I apologize. I live under a flight path. Volterra. As far as I can tell, I can't run. Ha! <laughs> I can use this? Oh my god, they don't have a body. It's kind of cool, I can use this stuff. Oh my god, I can actually use this. I'm actually swinging it back and forth. Can I go any more than that? What? That's all I can do? That's some bullshit, dude. The seesaw? The old movie way of telling that the kid is all alone in life. Squeaky as hell. I'm about to make myself dizzy in a goddamn game. I hope this much is interactable in the, the main part of the game. Not that? Oh, come on. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, shit. Okay, now I'm getting somewhere. That nice piano hue. L-K-A-I-T. Wired Productions presents. Well, yeah, that. And that's the insane asylum. Yeah, it took me like a good five minutes to actually go to that, that fence thing again, because I couldn't think of anything else to do. Beautiful.
beautiful piano hymn. I'm gonna tell you right now, if the whole game is like this, I'm gonna be very satisfied. With the OST at least. Memory. Well, wait, so this story does take place in 1940, though. It doesn't take place in, like, 2016, does it? Or, like, do you do certain things in here that will, like, awaken memories of a past? Because that's very possible, too. Inventory of objects of a patient upon admission. Charity congregation. Psychiatric hospital administration inventory of articles of clothing and footwear, cash, cards, and other valuables upon admission to the Asylum for Observation. Rene. There we go. On the day 12338. Details of clothing, amount of cash, valuables, cards, and other objects. Notes. Sweaters or shirts, one. Underwear, one. Pairs of socks, one. Shoes, one. Sets, di diapers, the shit. Vests, handkerchiefs. So that's everything. That's everything Renee had on her. Gotcha. Yeah, if you know anything about 1940s insane asylums, then you know that some shit's gonna get real. No, god damn it, I wanna... There we go. Voltaire on potential... Please kindly notify any relatives of death of inviting them to cover burial expenses, failing which corpses will be sent to Pisa for study purposes. That's fucked up. First, first one right there. Hey family, if someone dies in here, either you're covering the burial cost, or fuck their body. That's what that says. That's fucked up, man. Oh, shit. Bookcases. <sighs> Personal details. Son of David deceased, and ineligible. Eligible. Born in place provinces, single, married to to number of married to what number of children profession. The way this the way this information is organized is really weird to me. Oh. Ah, gotcha. Wood, Charlotte, time, memory, Renee's diary. The town, that's it, the town of light? <laughs> okay. Nineteen twenty six. Irene E. Hold on, the bitch. Twenty six years. The woman in the state of great agitation. She curses her three year old daughter for having ruined her life. She wanted to take us away, that damn kid. Wanted to kill us. She's the devil, I tell you. She's the devil herself. She destroyed my ability to give life. She left her sister in silence. So, okay, wait, 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 hold. This is, this is going to be important. Let me reread this whole thing. This is going to be very important. So she hates her three-year-old daughter. She wanted to take us away, that damned kid. Wanted to kill us. She's the devil, I tell you. She's the devil herself. She destroyed my ability to give life. Your daughter did that? I have to, I, I have to question what that means. She left her sister in silence. Silence is scary. The mother explains that her husband, Eric K., worried about her daughter, called a doctor who, noticing the state of the woman and the potential danger to her daughter, urgently initiated the procedure for admission. Oh, and by the way, you know, and now that may seem like just like a, a fit of rage or something like that, which it probably would be, but yes. Like I said, some critiques, yes, it was indeed that easy to, to get put in. Here's the thing about insane asylums, and this is one thing a lot of people don't know, is that 
you and, and you could get put in an insane asylum for the simplest of reasons. And it only took it usually took two doctor signatures, but sometimes even one, um, to get you into an insane asylum. Over bullshit all oftentimes too. Right? Like you can clearly be sane, say one stupid thing because you're emotional or some shit, right? And then you'll get put into a new insane asylum. Or or like or you could have a doctor called for some offhand reason, not related at all, and then something happens, you can easily you could have easily gotten put into an insane asylum, and a lot of people did. And not not only was it easy to get put into an insane asylum, but it was difficult to get out of one too. It took on average, depending on the asylum. So remember my note, you know, usually it takes two, but sometimes it takes one. Well, usually to, to get out of an insane asylum, usually it took five, but sometimes it would take six doctor signatures. And good luck getting five or six doctor signatures to get somebody out of an insane asylum if they've been there for like a year or two. And once they've been in there for like five, six, seven years or more, still good luck getting them, getting that many signatures to get them out. You all know why? Simple. Because even the most sane motherfucker, and I hope this game goes over this too, even the most sane motherfucker would go legitimately insane just from being in an insane asylum. Insane asylums turned people insane legitimately because of how fucked they were mentally speaking and sometimes physically speaking yes there were patients that got fucked literally um there's a lot they can touch on here and i hope they do touch on it but here, but only thing i'm fine with some notes but like i really do hope that they actually show some of this shit too mission the, the, the woman was admitted to observation. This is still, yeah, this is still Irene. The woman was admitted uh, to observation in the single room, not because she was dangerous, but in view of her social class. It seemed the most appropriate choice. So she was higher up. The mother has provided a generous donation, oh, yep, to this institution in order to find a more suitable accommodation for her daughter. No! Wait a minute, I may have misunderstood this whole thing. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. The potential daughter, unfortunately. Oh my shit, I misunderstood the whole thing until the very end. They put the fucking daughter in here. I'm telling you right now, that daughter, this shit happened in real life too. And I guarantee that's why they put that in, because I'm pretty sure this is probably based on a real life thing. Their daughter three years old, was put in here 100% guaranteed, or I guess I could say 99% guaranteed, that girl stayed in the institution, and and by and I'm pretty sure this is based on real life, so like this isn't me just being theoretical too, this is me predicting actual past, 99% guaranteed, that girl, that daughter, spent her whole fucking life in an insane asylum. In the 19 fucking, what is it, 20s, starting 20s. That's bullshit. That girl's whole life got fucked. She never had a fucking life. There are some people, there are people throughout history where sometimes they never had a fucking proper life, ever. Straight up. This girl, who I'm sure is a, a based on a real life person, was like that. Another person like that, Jeannie. Jeannie's a little girl who never had a proper life. You want to look up... I, I, I would give you the details on this girl, but they're not telling you the They're saying daughter. But I hope they give a, ch a child's name. You want to know more about Jeannie? Go to Google. Look up Jeannie Fer Feral Child. That's fucking fucked up, though, dude. You put your fucking daughter in a fucking insane asylum because you don't fucking want her anymore? Fuck you. Motherfuckers. Why does that bother me? It bothers me for two reasons. One, because like I said, this shit's based, it's, at least ostensibly, it's based on real shit, which means that that shit probably really happened. The only thing I remember clearly is Charlotte, 
My doll. Oh, shit. Real quick. So, but that was the first reason. And the second reason is because, oh, dude, putting your fucking daughter in a fucking insane asylum because she's fucking inconvenient for you. Okay, I don't, I don't know what you're... Okay, I don't normally like to get into this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Because I this is just fucking fucked. I don't know what your stance on abortion is, right? Whether it's murder or not, whether it's justified or not, I'm not here to argue either way. It's whatevs, right? But here's the thing, though. Whether or not, whether or not that is murder, I'm not seeing whether or not it is, but whether or not it is, even if it is, having an abortion is better for a fucking baby slash child ever. Like, okay, like if you were to take a three-year-old child and straight up slit that child's throat, that would be better for the child than to put them in an insane asylum in the 1920s. I'm not even exaggerating. Like, as fucked up as that image is, dude, like, being in an insane asylum in the 1920s, that, j just kill them. At that point, just fucking kill them. There's no point in having them be alive. But also, so I feel like, so is this girl, story-wise, is this girl like the reincarnation of like the girl from the 1940s or some shit? I feel like this girl's like a reincarnation of some shit. Let's not go in there yet. I want to explore more. Let's not go in out there yet. I want to explore more. <laughs> Bathroom. Yeah, yep. This this is based on a real institution. The stories I'm reading, I assume, are based on real stories, but this girl in specific is not real. And I, I'm already giving some strong convictions, I know that, but they're strong convictions that are very well warranted. And by the way, this game doesn't even have a specific goal. What I'm going through right now is this game's specific goal. A house. I'm sure anybody in one of these places would love to be in a house. There is no power. The master switch is near the calm women ward. I don't know how you know that, but thank you. So it's a puzzle then, gotcha. Oh. Was that it? <laughs> oh. Oh, shit. That shit works? Fuck. I'm not fucking taking it. Suck my dick. I don't give a shit if it works not. You think I'm about to be fucking trusting some goddamn elevator like that? You can suck my goddamn cock. Three ways from hell. No, no, she's freezing. She's alone. Let's look for her. Renee doesn't want to abandon her. You are Renee, aren't you? Why not playing as a fucking goat? Am I playing as a goat? <gasps> Let's search the wards on the upper floor. There's a plan on the wall which shows their location. The wards? Prediction for this whole fucking game right now. Renee died a long time ago. It's very clear. One thing... Now, once again, as far as belief goes, whether or not you believe ghosts, let's just, let's assume ghosts are real, right? 
there are many people who believe that how from how fucked up insane asylums were that many souls therein are restless even to this day. I know that this is starting to sound like a campfire story, I know. <laughs> um, but I think they based the main story off of that concept because I think that I'm playing as Rene from the 1940s. She doesn't know she's dead and she's looking for her doll and she's going to be trying to set her life right. I think that's what's going on here. Straight up. She's trying to set things right that were wrong when she was, uh... And Renee is probably that girl. Renee is probably that three-year-old girl that got sent here. And she probably died at the age of 16. Which, honestly, good, because... Like I said, be straight the fuck up, better to be dead than to be in this fucking place. In the 1920s and 30s and 40s. The wards, huh? Yeah, so my prediction is that I'm straight up playing as a dead girl. This shit is about to get fucked. Yep. Testing bullshit. Fuck this fucking place. You know, that also gives a sudden cre a subtle credence, too. Because you remember how I said, she said, you know, the powers in the calm women's ward, and I said, how, how, why would you know that? I assumed it was a simple gameplay quirk. Maybe there's a reason she knows that. Get my drift. Patient transfer document. Psychiatric hospital, transfer file name and surname, Fanti Clementi Paternity Luigi. So this is why, this is all weird, dude, like all this shit, I, this is all weird. I think I have this story figured out, though, already. Then again, this is a short game, ostensibly, as far as I know. Semi-agitate. Let's find Charlotte. She's alone. She's alone in the dark. I get it. I'm just not 100% sure where Charlotte fucking is. Mummy took good care of Charlotte. She tucked her in, hugged her, gave her cuddles and kisses. She was very affectionate and loving. Nothing bad happened to Charlotte, and that surprised me. I didn't understand. At first, I was quite scared. I was afraid that she wanted to hurt me. I lived in constant fear that Mom would abandon her. Because I didn't deserve to live. I didn't deserve to be loved. Added to the synopsis, man. Dude, this shit's fucking it's cold. fucked it's up. It's dark. Look. She's cold. She'll get ill. We can take care of her. Nobody can stop us. Charlotte is a good girl. New Chapter 2 Yeah. Yo, this is the kind of shit they do to people. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, fuck, man. Can I grab those keys? No.
Look at that. She believes the doll is real. Fuck, man. But so what? Uh, what's what's the objective now? He doesn't want to. Not Charlotte. What? Hold up. Oh, shit. Here we go. Renee's diary. My memory of those years is hazy. Between the age of about 7 and 10. My memories are disconnected and I couldn't say how many times and how frequently the light used to come. My mother gave me a doll around that time, Charlotte. Thinking back to it makes me want to laugh, but at the beginning I remember that I was afraid of her. I thought she wanted to harm me, to kill me and take my place. But when the light came, she would stay beside me and her presence did not disturb me. I was able to talk to her, and so she became my best friend, at least until I was in grade two, when everything changed. She didn't laugh at me, and if I had to say something to my mother, she asked, I asked her to say it. When things inside me turned bad, she was the only one I could turn to. Now all this makes me blush, but Charlotte was a real friend to me. Shit. Charlotte is cold. Let's take her somewhere warm. Gotcha. Holy Those shit. Those lamps could make the room warmer. But Charlotte's not happy. She doesn't feel well. Well, step one is making her feel better. I saw a wheelchair on the ground floor. It's comfortable there, and we can put Charlotte somewhere warm. Ground floor it is. Hmm. You know, honestly, I, I think it's an interesting angle. Like, you don't actually play the 1940s. You play in the current time, basically, but from the perspective of someone who was there. That way you're not actually seeing the shit happen. You're seeing the memory of the shit that happened. He'll get angry. I know he'll get angry. Oh, there is obviously... Where the hell is it? There it is. Charlotte will be comfy here. But it's cold. No, no, it's cold. Don't shiver, Charlotte. The cold will go away. It'll go away. Oh, cool. Well, why would I want to leave the wheelchair when I kind of have to be on it? So I gotta take her back to the lamps. I highly doubt I can take her up the stairs. Didn't think so. Alrighty. Oh, right. How do I... That's how. Motherfucker. We must find some warm light. Let's go to the surgical ward. Yeah, that's my fucking plan. <sighs> the 
This is so fucked up. I'm just looking. I don't remember where the surgical ward is. To the left, gotcha. You see? The light. The warmth. We can do it. The cold will go away. It has to. Now we can enter the ward where everything started. It all began in the observation ward on the ground floor. Hmm. 